the national medical council is doing uh, like uh, at the by the end of tb whatever year is it they are going to end the curriculum also so that's a bad part on the i mean from indian side we have so much burden of tuberculosis and we have the specialty dedicated for tb control md respiratory medicine and tb and respiratory diseases uh, i think they are on a flow of developing uh, i mean ending that uh, that respiratory medicine md and going for a dm pulmonary medicine um, uh, at par with uh, the cardiology nephrology gastroenterology and all the stuff so the, the 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 core people or doctors who are managing the tb program uh, we will be missing in the future like, uh, we have a lot of uh, under diagnosed or uh, uh, there is still the population which is getting away from this uh, diagnosis and treatment of tuberculosis what, what i feel so uh, we have to get into the community level and uh, um, get out of them even if they don't have the symptoms we have told 42 percentage were missed um were, might have been missed if the x-ray screening was not done in uh, people who were not having the symptoms so that's an eye opener for our way to look into um, the early diagnosis and a tuber tu i mean treatment uh, part of tuberculosis if indians can reach moon okay uh, why can't we reach into the communities with what what the whatever modalities you are talking about the the true net battery operated true net uh, can be taken into the camps and then screen the people and that can diagnose tuberculosis okay. so i i i 100% um, are in favor of uh, getting uh, more and more uh, community based uh, testing modalities so so that uh, uh, even the 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 primary care people uh, or health uh, sectors can manage tuberculosis in a very efficient and cost friendly manner uh hello welcome friends to this uh, another episode of ntb dialogues 90 for 90 global voices series today we have amongst us a very noted uh, chest physician and a, doc and a doctor who has uh, really been instrumental in so many uh, happenings in a country which is home to the highest burden of tuberculosis, India. Dr. Renes Davis, Hizakhe Pidika, he is the president of Association of Pulmonologists in Thrissur, professor and head of pulmonary medicine, and vice principal of Amala Institute of Medical Sciences in Thrissur. In, Kerala state of India. And more importantly, importantly, he's part of the organizing committee of the National Conference of TB Association of India called NATCON, which is going to open in about uh, two weeks in, um, in Thrissur, in Kerala, which will bring home uh, uh, several experts on TB and chest diseases from around the world, but of course from India, but of course a lot, lot of people will be there from uh, other countries as well. So welcome, Dr. Renes, welcome. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Bobby. Thank uh, you. Good afternoon. Yeah. Good afternoon. So, Dr. Renis, uh, uh, you know, given your industrious uh, career in terms of, you know, the academic work which you have done, the research work which you have done, the clinical work which you have done, um, you know, in terms of medical education um, uh, work which you have been doing in terms of not only the upcoming NatCon, but also so many other BroncoCon and so many other uh, 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 forums, uh, not only in Thrissur, Kerala, but nationwide and internationally. So, Doctor, uh, so we'd like to have your insights, sir. What has went well and what could have gone better in terms of, uh, you know, fighting the, this ancient disease of TB? Yeah, thank you. Um, that's a good question from Bobby's side. Um, uh, basically, if you uh, compartmentalize to academic clinic and research, what I feel is for academic uh, part, um, uh, the National Medical Council is doing uh, like uh, at the by the end of TB, whatever year is it, they are going to end the curriculum also. So that's a bad part on the, I mean, from Indian side, we have so much burden of tuberculosis and we have the specialty dedicated for TB control, MD respiratory medicine and TB and respiratory diseases. Uh, I think they are on a flow of developing, uh, I mean, ending that, uh, that respiratory medicine MD and going for a DM pulmonary medicine um, uh, at par with uh, the cardiology, nephrology, gastroenterology and all the stuff. So 
the the the, the core people or doctors who are managing the tb program uh, we will be missing in the future so uh, we, uh, before fighting against tuberculosis we have to fight against this move of uh, uh, whatever we we do have dm here at our center but still what i see is uh, there is requisite for uh, md respiratory uh, and the uh, tb managing physicians so uh, and also the the medical undergraduates uh, they are not learning much about tuberculosis as in previous years because they are in their curriculum the, the the hours of teaching about the tb has reduced to one hour in 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 a career of four and a half years they are going to hear tb only one hour in the theory sessions probably they may be having the clinical materials at their own place but i mean the patients in the wards but um, the main theory part is only one or two hours and that we have to teach the, uh, the who has got the pulmonary specialty or respiratory specialty degrees so only two hours are dedicated for this uh, respiratory or tb physicians for taking classes for undergraduates and bbs people so um, that also has to be relooked uh, in a way like um, um, controlling tuberculosis we need good um, basis of uh, the or the knowledge about it's not only the academic side or the the social interaction the come from the community level politician level or any levels of which we think about ending the tuberculosis uh, that budding should happen from the undergraduate medical st uh, students onwards so that has to be really looked what i feel uh, from the clinical point of view uh, the government is doing a very good work the tb association of india is doing their uh, the best to control tuberculosis but the burden is too much uh, like uh, we have a lot of uh, underdiagnosed or uh, uh, there is still the population which is getting away from this uh, diagnosis and treatment of tuberculosis what, what i feel so uh, we have to get into the community level and uh, um, get out of them even if they don't have the symptoms so um, uh, from the clinical point of view uh, uh, what we uh, feel is uh, the main obstacles are one uh, the um, uh, there are three obstacles out of which first one is the mdr tuberculosis multi drug resistant tuberculosis where uh, the rifamycin and inh our old good drugs are not acting on them and uh, the second obstacle is um, the uh, the uh, latent tuberculosis uh, where whenever we if you are going to end tb uh, there will be a lot of contacts which in, 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 in the Indian population which may ha harbor the infection but may not the disease. So the, if they are more the, in numbers, uh, the TB is never going to end. Whenever the pay people get some immunosuppression due to some viral infection or diabetes or alcohol or sleep deprivation or nutritional deficiencies, or these all pro uh, they are all prone to... Uh, uh, from infection to disease, if this uh, latent tuberculosis people are moving around, so uh, that has to be that that is the main uh, the second uh, the area where we have to um, look into and uh, manage. I mean, the diagnose them and manage them, and uh, we should have a um, uh, good um, recommendations or guidelines uh, to um, put forward for uh, uh, physicians managing uh, tuberculosis. And then uh, the third obstacle will be the extra pulmonary tuberculosis. Uh, we all are talking about the pulmonary tuberculosis. It's okay. Uh, they expectorate, they cough, they cough around, they, they are more contagious, they, uh, they transmit the disease all over. But uh, the extra pulmonary, they are silent, but they are also silent killers In uh, if you see from the tuberculosis side because they may not be in the pulmonary uh, or lungs, it may be in the pleura with the uh, pleural effusion or maybe in the renal system uh, taking uh, knocking out the kidneys or maybe in gi tract getting uh, perforation of the uh, uh, the colon or later or uh, they are all with the complications so the cardiac pericarditis or chronic uh, uh, the cardiac failure uh, this all happens with the tuberculosis uh, and we are not diagnosing them in the Early, earlier stage uh, so that also has to be looked into when we manage or we try to end the tuberculosis 
and from the research point of view we are all infant i i know we are all infants in uh, uh, in the research uh, when we compare with the western people uh, especially the in a where, where we have more of tb patients um, uh, our research is too poor uh, when we compare with the western people they have less patients but they do more research and they come out with good results and the recommendations but uh, we um, indians or chinese people we were there is lot of the, the other developing nations where we have lot of burden of tuberculosis they, our research is very uh, in the back front so that has to be move forward uh, for better control of uh, tuberculosis that's my take bobby yeah thank you so much uh, dr renes for such a you know important overview of uh, different aspects of the fight against tb so uh, uh, let, let's uh, let's uh, get more insights of you sir as uh, diagnose you know when we talk about early and accurate diagnosis of tb but um, in terms of walking the talk on that many high tb burden countries need to do a lot more for example who uh, highest level initiative Uh, had called on all governments to replace microscopy which underperforms in diagnosing tb uh, with the molecular tests in 2018 and uh, it had to be done by 2027 so if you look at globally more, more than half of the patient tb people with tb uh, get diagnosed with microscopy still uh, in india i think it is 33% are using molecular tests now uh, we have molecular tests which are uh, you know uh, lab independent battery operated indian made that we recommend it and uh, point of care not only no, like true net for example which is not only being used in india the largest used one but also in several other countries but we really need to roll it out uh, this is what we believe to find all cases of tb you you made a very important point that we should not only be looking for four symt symptoms of tb Bec um, the government's national um, tb surveillance survey 2019 to 2021 uh, said that 42.7 percent, if I remember correctly, patients would have been missed if they had not used an X-ray as a screening tool. So, so sir, can you? Uh, how can we find all TB? Because that is such a critical entry gate to TB care pathway, but also very critical entry gate to break the chain of infection transmission and also to do upfront DST. if we use uh, the latest technologies recommended by who or bring closer to the bring them closer to the people and communities over to you sir yeah that is an eye opener the the percentages right as you have told 42 percentage were missed um, were, might have been missed if the x ray screening was not done in uh, people who were not having the symptoms so that's an eye opener for our way to look into Um, the early diagnosis and a tube, I mean treatment uh, part of tuberculosis. If Indians can reach moon, okay, uh, why can't we reach into the communities with what what the whatever modalities you are talking about the the true net battery operated true net uh, can be taken into the camps and then screen the people. and that can diagnose tuberculosis we have we have the community i mean the government based uh, uh, cartridge based nuclear acid amplification test but um, they are all uh, i mean um, uh, 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 saturated with the number of tests they do uh, because um, uh, one, they will be keeping one cp net machine and uh, then uh, they can screen only um, two hourly and may may take up two or four so how much they can run so we have to indians have to come up with more and more machines which can diagnose tuberculosis very early uh, mic microscope basically might uh, it is become a primitive mode of diagnosis but it diagnoses the cases from the simple as simple as that with the sputum sample uh, but the, the with the uh, evolution we have to come up with more diagnostic modalities uh, which are more community friendly or the, the we get we um, uh, doctors or medical persons get into the community and catch them as like catching the fish you catch them early even with or without symptoms and then the, the treat the people at the community based level so that gives a good hold on ending the tuberculosis um so i i i 100% are in favor of getting more and more community based testing modalities 
so so that uh, uh, even the 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 primary care people uh, or health uh, sectors can manage tuberculosis in a very efficient and cost friendly manner um that's all um, um it's 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 a it's a need of time i will tell like uh, all this uh, molecular test and all the stuff um, and uh, that that's why i tell you the research is not going up, up front in india so we have to come up with more researches on uh, researches on this uh, tuberculosis diagnosis as well as on treatment because we have a lot of clinical materials we have a lot of uh, people with um, pulmonary and extra pulmonary tuberculosis uh, uh, most of the extra pulmonary tuberculosis can be managed with all these uh, secondary or tertiary care centers where we do have more uh, acute uh, instruments uh like uh, thoracoscopy to get the pleural biopsies uh, or uh, the, the the renal biopsies or uh, um, uh, any other uh, high front uh, like pet ct or ct scan all this can be considered in the secondary or ter tertiary level but uh, in a primary health care center or in, in in if you go into the communities uh the ctb which is coming uh, like uh, we are getting uh, from serum uh, institute of uh, india where we, uh, initially the mando test or tuberculin test was done to know about the infection where there is infection in you and me uh, uh, and it gives a clue like uh, the patient may the person may be having uh, disease so then we can uh, get into the second step so that same way for a community uh, we are coming up with the ctb uh, which is another uh, subcutaneous test where we can uh, come to know about the infection in that individual similar way the we can do in a lot of people at uh, one center and a similar way the true net machines or cb net machines uh, battery operated ones what you were talking about all this has to be got into the uh, the community level or public level and then we have to make a program to diagnose uh, and uh, keep um, i mean more and more uh, the early diagnosis of the uh, the tuberculosis patients uh, at the earliest and get, treat them if you are looking at the ntb program of 25 yeah Th yeah thank you so much uh, dr nilas very important point and let us hope uh, that happens because uh, uh, ending tb is not just a public health imperative but also is a human rights imperative it's a preventable and curable disease so dr Ennis, uh, 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 you raised a very another very important issue about extra pulmonary tb perhaps that also gets uh, often uh, you know uh, missed uh, if i can missed. say uh, so what more can be done sir? Uh, bobby um, even if you are not a medical person you are talking uh, with knowledge uh, because you have read this subject and more than a medical student who is passing out the mbbs degree so that's because that's what i tell you we have to uh, educate the people about this disease uh, in the community level and uh, uh, there is some the people all know about only pulmonary tuberculosis but uh, there is a 25 percentage or 30 percentage people with extra pulmonary going in the com i mean in the living with uh, with uh, our community so uh, to diagnose it earlier we, uh, we it all depends on the specialty wise in a, a tertiary care center we, what equipments or what uh, tools they have to diagnose it um, uh, from their armamentarium or what all tools they have uh, to diagnose this tuberculosis uh, it depends on the specialty like as you have told if it's a gentle urinary uh, the urology department should be equipped with their diagnostic modalities and if it's uh, gynecology, again, uh, the, the, the way they take the biopsies or estrus, uh, the scopies they do, and then a gastroenterology, they, they, should, they, they should come up with the diagnosis early enough for which they should have some basic or uh, more knowledge about this tuberculosis prevailing in, uh, as extra pulmonary in, in our community. Uh, so uh, you know, they all should be educated. All the specialists should be educated about the tuberculosis if we really want to uh, end the TB by 2025. Because um, that's why I to, to told you, like, uh, the, the main obstacles will be drug resistant tuberculosis, latent tuberculosis, and this extra pulmonary. So um, uh, if we, this pulmonary, is, uh, only the pulmonary physicians or uh, the community medicine people who are managing tuberculosis or the government health workers who are managing tuberculosis, uh, may have to extend their uh, knowledge to other specialty doctors uh, to get out all this extra pulmonary tuberculosis uh, with the, the best uh, they, uh, tool they have in their hands. 
uh, in HIV, basically, uh, the as you know, like uh, their immunity is too low. They most of them get into uh, tuberculosis, but mostly extra pulmonary is more common in them. So they are the target population where we have to uh, get out the symptoms of all the organs uh, when it starts in them. And uh, then, then they have to be referred to a uh, tertiary care center for early diagnosis. Uh, they, the, uh, otherwise, it's difficult to manage uh, the, uh, or diagnose uh, extra pulmonary tuberculosis from a, from a primary health care point of view. So they have to get out the symptoms at the earliest when they are on uh, heart treatment or highly active antiretroviral treatment. If they have some symptoms, as you have told, like cough, shortness of breath or low grade fever or something happening, then uh, obviously they have to take an X-ray or then get the sputum for examination. But uh, it, it all depends on the CD4, CD8 count in their blood, uh, which will protect them against all these uh, uh, the diseases. Uh, where uh, this extra pulmonary is uh, uh, is predominating in uh, HIV, so we have to be all that specialty doctors have to be very vigilant uh, in uh, uh, diagnosing this extra pulmonary um, uh, tuberculosis at the earliest and treat them. Yeah, thank you so much for for mentioning that. Let us hope that happens as well. Um, so thanks a lot, Dr. NS. Uh, I know we are taking a lot of your time despite your busy schedule and also the upcoming uh, conference uh, in Hatcon. So before we wrap up, sir, uh, any final thoughts uh, and also your message for the upcoming Hatcon as one of the key organizers? Organizers. First of all, I welcome all you, you all people um, uh, for Hatcon. Uh, I told you we need you. It's not like uh, uh, you are supposed to come. Yeah, we need your help. You are the media persons. The we need the politicians. We need the uh, community uh, health workers. Uh, uh, we we need all the medias um, uh, to curtail this uh, disease or to contain this disease. Uh, because it's not. Uh, I sit in my clinic and manage uh, tuberculosis. It won't be nation nationwide. Um, um, I am doing a crime. I have to get all you people into this conference and uh, get educated and uh, do what you can uh, to um, uh, stop this disease uh, then only it's a good teamwork rather than an individual work to um, uh, as a part of i am uh, work, uh, the um, uh, workshop for this conference um, uh, at workshops it's at a different uh, osp uh, the hospitals amala uh, jubilee and the government medical college hospitals uh, 10 workshops are conducted uh, we include uh, related to tuberculosis also, maybe uh, ultrasound, maybe workshop, maybe this uh, pulmonary function test workshop, maybe bronchoscopy and interventional pulmonology, the critical care. All this, what we can do for tuberculosis. So all these workshops being conducted at uh, three different uh, colleges, uh, the on second uh, Feb, and uh, uh, Dr. Davis Paul and Dr. Uh, Judo uh, Chairman and uh, the um, extend their regards to you all and uh, to third and fourth and uh, uh, um, I, I think um, we need you all at, at the site uh, um, for you people no, no, no registration no nothing okay you, you, we will be providing you all help and all the what you call hospitality from our side, what we can. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. NS. Let us hope for that more and more media and communication people also go on site, as well as so many other important uh, medical experts, politicians, and other, as you rightly said, all other stakeholders, um, um, uh, you know, become one team to to in, the, in this fight against TB. Thanks a lot, sir, for sharing your insights, not only on finding all TB, but also treatments and extra drug resistance, which is um, um, drug resistance for anti-TB, but also antimicrobial resistance generally is a, is a very important major public health threat, which, which is so avoidable if we use uh, medicines, uh, res, uh, you know, with uh, appropriate and uh, res responsibly. So um, also thanks a lot, Dr. Rennes, for uh, you know uh, sharing your insights on latent tuberculosis, which is often so very missed. 
and uh, uh, unless we really put these different pieces together and uh, uh, cook, uh, you know, uh, act upon what you have just said, um, it will be uh, the battle against tuberculosis is uh, is really a difficult one. So, so really hope that what you have uh, shared, uh, you know, becomes a reality in terms of actions as well, uh, not only in India but also other countries. So, uh, so with these words, sir, we're looking forward to the upcoming NatCon and look forward to seeing you. All the very best from all of us for successful organizing of the NatCon. Thanks a lot, Dr. Dennis, for speaking with us. Thank you. Thank you, Bob, for part of uh, your uh, media interview. Uh, I extend a warm welcome to all you, you and you, your team uh, at uh, Hayat to Chur once more. Thank you very much.